Hello, I am your host, David Guerra, and I welcome you back to another episode of the Walking Leader Podcast. As always, the Walking Leader Podcast is for you, current and future leaders, to help give you the tools to help you succeed as a leader in your organization as well as in your personal life. The tools of the walking leader focus on getting you up and out from behind your desk and out onto the front lines where those you lead, because that's where they are every day. They're in the trenches day in and day out. And as a leader, attention leaders, in case no one told you, I'm telling you now, it is your responsibility to know how the battle is going. And there is no better way to know than to be out on the front lines where the bullets are flying. So get out there. And now without delay, let's get this episode started. Failure, everyone gets. No one is immune. If you never experience failure, how do you know how to properly celebrate success? Failure is inevitable. Failure cannot survive without success. And by that token, success cannot survive without failure. And I can say with certainty, failure is something we all share. We all share in having failed at something in our lives. I know we have all failed at something because we are human beings. And contrary to popular belief, we are not perfect beings. We were born with perfect imperfections. We make mistakes. We make perfect mistakes. We fail. There are no two ways around that fact. For those that want to pull the wool over your eyes and claim that they never fail or never make mistakes, then let me be the first to tell them they are absolutely failing with that claim. In just about everything we attempt to do or actually do, there is going to be failure. Failure is to be expected. Consider failure as a major component of what what it is you're trying to create, do, or make. Failure also serves as a sign of being on the right track. On the right track, you ask? Yes, yes. In that failure tells you something is not right here. Work to figure it out and move on. When it comes to the amateur and professional mindsets, when failure occurs, the actions taken by either is almost 180 degrees of the other. When encountering failure, the individual with the professional mindset will see it as an opportunity and and, then what it is. That's what it truly is. It's an opportunity. While the amateur mindset individual will beat a hasty retreat and all but give up. See, of course, both mindsets react in a manner that also all but ensures that the failure will never happen again. The amateur turns tail and runs while the professional learns from it and continues down the path only to make more mistakes before success finally arrives. Now, making a transition from an amateur mindset to the in, to an individual with a professional mindset is one that will be chock full of failures, tries and more failures and more retries. However, failures do not magically go away when the professional mindset take o- takes over. No, there are more to be made and more will be expected and welcomed. And welcome or not, they do not go into any endeavor. They, the uh, the professional mindset individual, does not go in, into any endeavor with the mindset of on, set on failure uh, and that failure is going to happen. The m- most certainly, um, they will encounter failure upon failure. As you have set the standard, so the standard expectation to be failure, well, what else can come from it? than what you're trying to accomplish. See, trying to go into any endeavor with your mind wrapped around doing the best you can do, well, then you go as far, you go further and farther in the mission to change your mindset from an amateur to the professional. It will become easier to focus on success. However, and let me clarify, however, all the while, keep yourself grounded in the reality, not the expectation, but the reality that failures will occur. They will occur because of your expectations to, what, let me rephrase that. They will occur not because of your expectation to fail, but because you are not perfect. No one is perfect. And with that bit of information, knowledge and wisdom firmly tucked into your back pocket as you proceed, then when the dark shadow of failure comes tapping at your door, you will welcome it in only to learn from it. Now, the amateur mindset individual does not like to fail. But no surprise, no one likes to fail. No one likes failure. And as I have alluded to, failure comes from having a defeatist attitude. Believing in failure, then failure will sure to follow. It is all about the manifestation and what, and if what the amateur is, amateur is manifesting failure, then they are surely going to get what they're manifesting. And of course, no amateur will go anywhere and publicly announce that they're going to fail. 
See, on the outside, the amateur will project the want and willingness to win. It is when the crowds are not looking and the cheering stops that the amateur will will return to what they know because they know nothing else. Inevitably, they step up and take their turn at bat only to balk. They balk. They stop short as failure lives in the mind of those not ready for success. The amateur knows that those around them will give him or her a pat on the back, say good job, you'll get them next time, and oh, by the way, here's your participation trophy. Knowing fully well that that at their next at bat, they may hit a single or bunt, but a home run is truly the last thing on their mind. The baseball analogy fits the bill here. There are people that know they have the skills, the drive, the ability, but when it comes to their turn, they just cannot hit that home run. Eventually, they will get. Uh, they will come to expect a single or the occasional double. But of course, and of course, out of pity, they will be granted that very rare walk. This will take the amateur mindset individual only so far. And then what? Then, realizing they are no longer able to contribute to the game or to the team, they will leave for greener pastures and become coaches. Unfortunately, having never consistently hit home runs at at best, they will never be a true coach. Now, I should say, not necessarily consistently, but they should um, never, never hitting home runs. How can they be a true coach? See, authentic coaches have just as many wins as they have losses. That's what a coach does. Now, while this may sound harsh, the reality is that while no one wants to talk about it, the truth is the truth. From a very young age, I recall pulling my pulling my swings, uh, not delivering more than what was required of me. And when certain opportunities came, I balked. Um, and I'm not afraid to publicly admit, publicly admit that over the course of my life, the amateur expectation of failure was pretty much prevalent. And to this day, I do not know if it was genetics, my upbringing, or lack of education, either myself or those that brought me up, or too much education, or not enough common sense, Or I was listening to the wrong people. Probably that too. Especially those closest to me that would constantly make certain I heard the words that questioned my very being. Those words were, in a question, who does he think he is? Now, realizing that as an amateur mindset individual, all I was doing was turning tail and running. Most individuals with the mindset of an amateur will eventually find their only solace will be to turn and run away. Instead of standing fast and figuring out what is happening, why it is happening, and uh, determining how to prevent it from happening again. Now, of course, that failed to stand fast and figure it all out. The amateur would rather keep repeating the same failure or, or mistakes than to learn from themselves and others. Their mindsets will refuse to allow themselves to look at their failures as a reality. They will look They will look at the failures of others, not as tools to learn from, but as something to ridicule, to belittle and laugh at, all while they themselves are continuing to make or create the exact same failures they're laughing at. Now, when things still do not go the way the amateur wants them to go, well, inevitably, the fangs and the claws come out. Sadly, far too many amateurs have only one direction, and it's with those fangs and claws, also known, known, known as blaming and pointing and pointing at others. Amateurs will blame everyone and everything for their own lack of success. They will go out of their way to find someone to blame, but seldom look in the direction of the true origin of that failure. And that's within themselves. The, the, the amateur mindset individual will go, will fight tooth and nail to ensure that someone other than themselves is blamed for their failure. They will spend way more energy and time on blaming others than on just bettering themselves. They would rather justify their reason for a failure than to just admit they failed and are now ready to move on by learning from that failure. And of course, not everyone with an amateur mindset will behave in this extreme manner, but there are those that do, and the majority will. And they are firmly entrenched in their mindset that they may never find a way out or up, all because someone else is keeping them in 
or keeping them down. And no matter if they are right or not, the amateurs that excel at blaming others will continue to do exactly what they have been doing prior to the failure and then act surprised that the outcome was as before, another failure. See, only to repeat their actions over and over again, the, these amateur mindset individuals remind us something like like a moth, like a moth that is drawn to a flame that will eventually get burned as it, it will get burned. And of course, even after the moth has been burned, it will continue to do its kamikaze attempts to get close to the light given off by the flame. However, most with that amateur mindset will long since have given up before being burned again. So they're smart enough to do that. At least we hope so. And just like no one truly likes physical discomfort, the amateurs will not tolerate emotional discomfort and will go out of their way to avoid it and thus also avoid addressing it. However, and we're talking about those failures now, however, as they are not prepared to deal with discord and fail to properly prepare for the failure because it will inevitably return. Thus, it behooves the amateur to practice allowing yourself to experience uncomfortable emotions like boredom, frustration, sadness, or loneliness, and increase your tolerance to the negative emotions that you may experience as you increase your self-discipline. Keep that in mind. We'll come back when we'll come back to that one in a later episode. Now, intentionally experiencing the uncomfortable sounds like a lot of work. It sounds a lot like work. And there's that four-letter word again. Well, that's it for this episode of the Walking Leader Podcast. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate. Drop me an email at dave at davegarrett.com or leave me a voice message at the Walking Leader hotline at 956-720-0060. Or reach out to me on Twitter at Dave Guerra, all one word. That's the at symbol, Dave Guerra. That's my name. And I look forward to hearing from you. Also, I want to thank you for your time. I do appreciate you making it to this point of the episode. I am David Guerra, author of the books The Walking Leader and Great to Follow, and I invite you to subscribe to The Walking Leader Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, and Stitcher. You can find all those links on the DaveGuerra.com website. Lastly, I want to remind you to always go beyond the grind and go beyond the hustle because that's the only way to be the walking leader and a leader that is truly great to follow. And until next time, I thank you. The Walking Leader Podcast is a David Gerrard presentation.